Good morning. You're listening to WIFO FM Jessup. Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob show for the 16th day of March. And it's brought to you by O'Quinn and Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bank. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by Oakwind and Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South Fair Street right here in Jessup. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Hi, I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Mandy Yeomans. At First Southern Bank, our customers are like family. As a locally owned community bank, we're dedicated to helping our clients succeed. We have loans for every need, whether it's personal or business. We have lines of credit, auto loans, equipment loans, and of course, we offer mortgages. Stop by our bank or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. Bob, take take it away. Okay, it's time now for the world famous Butch and Bob Show, and we've got Congressman Buddy Carter on the phone with us, and Buddy, uh, appreciate you calling in, a lot going on, but let's start with what's important, I understand you filled out your bracket for March Madness, I gave my final <laughs> four picks, so we'll get your final four pick, and who's cutting down the nets in Houston? Well, um, I can't remember who my final four was, I remember who my uh, cutting down the nets was, though, I'm, okay, I'm going just with the Zags, who I'm you, going who, with the Zags. Gonzaga? <laughs> All right, that's way off the mark too. Yeah, he's going on a limb. I like that. <laughs> right. I got the Duke Blue Devils cutting down the nets. So I said most people picking Alabama. Alabama looks awfully good, but me being a diehard dog fan, just can't go there. So no, no, that was impossible. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get to what's important. What's going on in Washington D.C.? You know, the big story is the, the Republican candidates for president. People are throwing their hats in the ring. We've got. Uh, Nikki Haley's in, Trump's in, it appears DeSantis is going to get in, he's out there campaigning, uh, Pence looks like he may get in, Pompeo, your thoughts on the Republican candidates and where do you think this is going? Well, obviously the 800-pound gorilla in the room is, is President Trump, and it all depends on what he's going to do. It sure looks like Ron DeSantis is going to run, and, you know, all the pundits will tell you that the more people who run, the better it is for Trump because he has his he has his base, and they feel like you know that's what happened last time. Is there were so many candidates in the in the room, and Donald Trump was the one who came out ahead because he had the base there. And uh, and there's a lot being said about that this time that the fewer people who run against Donald Trump, then the less chance he has of winning. I don't know how true that is, um, but what I do know is this: we've got a good group of, of candidates. We've got a strong, strong bench. I mean, when you look at Ron DeSantis, at Mike Pompeo, at Nikki Haley, at Tim Scott, all of these candidates are quality candidates who I think would make great presidents. And the other thing I know is we have got to win. We have got to get this guy out of the White House 
and we have got to get Republican policies back in place, conservative policies back in place. We've got to unleash American energy. If we don't, our economy is not going to grow. Well, the bottom line, let's just say the Republicans can't screw this one up. You know. <laughs> Hopefully. That's it in a nutshell. But one thing that bothers me, and we've had you on for the last several months, the situation in Ukraine, and both Trump and uh, DeSantis are acting like uh, this is just a you know, property dispute. But, I mean, this has been an invasion. The United States has been behind uh, Ukraine, supported Ukraine with millions of dollars. Uh, people think they haven't done enough. They should give him the air power that um, he keeps saying he needs. So you've been a strong supporter of Ukraine, so your thoughts on that? I mean, the Republican Party's not, I mean, most people, all the Republicans out here in Congress are still behind Ukraine, but the runs throwing their hats in the ring for president, they look like they want to abandon the effort in Ukraine. So your thoughts on that? Well, I think that's mostly true. I will tell you there are some in Congress who are questioning it now and questioning whether or not we're doing the right thing particularly when you look at some other things that are going on in the country, like what's going on in East Palestine and, and the federal response there. You know, should we be sending money overseas as opposed to sending it to our own people and who, who obviously need it, and they certainly need it there. So that's one of the arguments that's being made in Congress. And I, I'll be quite honest with you, I've been a little disturbed at, at some of the comments that the presidential candidates have made. Um, I think they get it. I, I know President Trump gets it, and I know Ron DeSantis gets it. Um, and, and certainly Mike Pompeo, having been Secretary of State, I, I know he gets it too. But, you know, I think we may have a little fatigue setting in here. Uh, this has been going on for over a year now, and it's it's just like a an abyss. I mean, it's just like we're just pouring money into it, and we're wondering when is this going to end, and when are we going to get off the hook. But... I, I just don't know about firepower. Um, that's, uh, you know, especially through the air, that's going to, uh, that's a big commitment. And, you know, it's going to take a lot of training of their pilots because we're certainly not going to use American pilots. So, you know, it, even if they were to cut it loose now and say, yeah, we're going to send you the F-16s or, or whatever, it, it would take a while before they'd be able to get trained up on them and, and be able to use them. And just joining us on the phone with us is Congressman Buddy Carter. We've had you on there several months, and you, you, you're the one that's predicted, you know, the big monkey or the big elephant in the room is China. And you keep telling me that China's just sitting back waiting to invade Taiwan. If that happens, no telling what's going to take place. You still think that's going to take place? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 I feel that even stronger today than I have ever before. If you look at what's happening particularly in Latin America, and I don't know in, in Central America and Latin America. I don't know if um, I shared this with you before or not, but I had the opportunity to travel to Spain this past August. And when we were over there, I was amazed at their concern of China's influence in Central America. Now, remember, Spain settled a lot of those countries, so there's still a strong relationship between the Spanish and the Central American countries. And they were, I, I mean, I would say that was one of the top three issues that they were concerned with, was the influence that China's having in Central America. We look at right now and what's happening with Saudi Arabia, what's happening with Iran, and, and now China is right in the thick of that. Um, Israel is very concerned about the new allegiance that's been struck up there in the Middle East, and... China's influence is all over the world. There's no question about that. Theirs is a calculated, uh, calculated program that they are going to try to take over militarily. They're trying to take over economically. They they want to be the world leader, and and they're having a strong influence in and all over the world. Some people say that Americans are helping them out because we buy trillions of dollars worth of products from China every single year. Every every single year, and. And, and it is. It's helping their economy. It's hurting our economy. Um, you know, as you know, I'm, I live over here in the Savannah area in Pooler, and uh, this week we've been in the district, and I've been traveling throughout the district. I, I've been uh, and around the, the ports and seeing all the, the, the new warehouses that are being built here, over a million, in one warehouse, one and a half million square feet 
of, of swords. And I said, Where, where's all this coming from? Most of it's coming from China. You know, we're, we're storing it here and then sending it out to our stores. I said, well, don't you get anything domestically? Yeah, but most of it comes from China. And one final question on that topic. If they do invade, what do you think the United States' response is going to be? I mean, we're talking a tough game that we're going to take action, but you know, what, what will be the response by the U.S.? I hope it will be a, a very strong message that we send them. Um, you know, with this administration, and, and yeah, I'm a critic of this administration, but I'm an American, and I, I, I want us to do the right thing, and I I don't want any harm to come to our country, but I, I just have to be quite honest with you. After what happened in Afghanistan, after seeing the, the, the way that this president has handled foreign policy, I just don't have a lot of confidence. I, just, I don't have a lot of confidence in, in his ability to, to navigate that course, but it, it's got to be strong. It's got to be a strong response, one that shows that we're just not going to allow them to, to do this, that we as the leaders of democracy in the world. Well, aren't there other countries over that. there in the Pacific area like uh, Japan, Australia, South Korea, and other countries in that area, the Philippines? Aren't we working together with those countries to come up with a plan to work together in case China invades Taiwan? I, I'm sure we are. I'm sure we are. I'm not um, you know, exactly privy to that information, not being on Armed Services Committee, but at the same time, we do get information on that, and we have been told that that is the case, much like what is the case with Ukraine and Europe. You know, I, we still don't feel like Europe's doing their part in, in the war with Ukraine and, and, and Russia. We still feel like they need to pick up the pace and they need to be doing carrying a, uh, a heavier burden than what they are. Same thing probably, I suspect, goes with, with that area in, in, in around Taiwan as well. Another topic that you've talked about many times on the show, and you've been to the border many times, is the, the you know, what's going on at the border. I mean, a little bit odd to watch, buddy. It just looks to me like the cartels are running the whole show. I mean, it's all about money. Oh, cartels are running it. I mean, why can't we um, go in there and take those guys out? Well, and there have been quite a few bills, and I've signed on to quite a few bills. Dan Crenshaw is one. Dan Crenshaw from Texas is, um, has – you know, we want to stop short of referring to the cartels as terrorists. But at the same time, he wants, he's got a bill, and I've signed on to it, that would allow the use of military force to, to fight the cartels. And I, I think we should. Um, you know, I suspect, I don't suspect, I know that they are better equipped in many countries, militarily, many countries. And, and it's... It, and you're exactly right. I mean, you talk about a well-oiled machine. They are a well-oiled machine, and they are making money hand over fist. It's yeah. unbelievable. And these uh, these uh, folks that are coming across the border illegally, they don't go through that cartel, cartel land at all without having to pay some sort of fee. And so uh, not only the cartels making a lot of money through their, their drug sales, but they're making a lot of money from these thousands of folks coming across the border every single week. No question about it. And, of course, we, we know what that's doing, bringing illegal people into our country, but the illegal drugs that are infesting our communities and killing between two and 300 people every day, it's, you know, it's fentanyl poisoning. It is not addiction. It is poisoning. They are poisoning our citizens. And the active ingredients used to make those drugs are coming from China. Um, it's... Sometimes it's overwhelming. And I asked you this question before uh, when I had you on there. You know, they said you have friends across the aisle. What did the Democrats say about it? They said because Biden still has yet to go down there, and Kamala's supposed to be in charge, but she's not been down there. So, how do you solve the problem when you don't want to go look and see what the problem is? Well, there are quite a few of of the of, of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle, particularly those who represent the border uh, and and the areas near the border. They in Texas and Arizona and in New Mexico, and they are very concerned, and they get it. They and they have called on the president, their president, uh, who's the leader of their party, and they've called on him to do something and, and to have action. Um, obviously, as of yet, he is he's not done that. But uh, no, they there are quite a few of them who get it and understand. Now we see what's happening in New York with some of, so many of them coming up there. Even those 
Democratic um, representatives in that state are beginning to say, hey, we can't take much more of this. And I ask you all the time, how about some good news? Any good news in Washington, D.C.? We don't, <laughs> you can tell us. <laughs> you know, we laugh, there, there, I mean, people are looking. Give us some positive hope. Give us something good. Well, you know, I, I appreciate you asking that because there is something I want to mention. Um, with the ruling that the president has made with Willow up in, um, up in Alaska, it would appear that he is, is, and that wasn't the best ruling, but at least it was a good ruling. He is opening up some of that for, for oil exploration. And what you're seeing now is a decrease in the price of oil. Our economy is getting a little better. And I think it shows this administration that their attack on fossil fuels, their attack on American energy, is what got us into this mess economically. This was that, what's happening in our economy now. I would submit to you as a self-inflicted wound brought about by the policies of this administration when they declared war on American energy. If they would unleash American energy, we could get our economy back to humming again. And and concentrate on what our goal is. Our goal is the same as is the, the Democrats' goal, and that is to decrease emissions. Not to decrease choices, but decrease emissions. We all love our environment. We love our environment. All of us do. We want to protect our environment, but you don't just do away with fossil fuels. We, fossil fuels are, are, are going to be here, and we just have to make them as clean as we possibly can. St. Patrick's Day weekend, always a big event in Savannah. You're from that area. You're going to be down there in the parade and in Savannah for oh, St. I'll Patrick's be Day. There. I think you would be. I'll so. be there. Will you be in the parade? <laughs> I will. I will. I love it. It's a lot of fun, you know. I got to tell you a real quick story. When I was Mayor Pooler, I was in the parade, and I made one of my sons. He was 16, then my oldest son. I made him drive me in the parade, and I came home. I was so proud. I stuck my chest out, and I told my wife, honey, you wouldn't believe it. They all knew my name, and they were just waving at me, and, and my, my son looked up at her and rolled his eyes. He said, Mom, his name was on the side of the car, and they were all drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hey, uh, put Dad back in his place, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> burst my bubble. Uh, uh, well, buddy, have fun in Savannah. Like I said, stay safe. It's always a big event. Uh, like I said, a lot going on down there. And, March Madness, you get you're sitting in there and, and eat some wings and watch some basketball as well. Yeah, I got my final four. I had Duke and Virginia, and then I had Texas A&M and Gonzaga, and I got Gonzaga winning it. Okay. 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 Well, good luck to your bracket. It's like my bracket. I just hope it's intact after the weekend, you know, down in the Sweet 16 after go. the weekend. So. Hopefully it's not busted up before then. So anyway, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Again, thank you very much for being on the show. It's very informative, and uh, wish you well. Have fun in St. Patrick's Day in Savannah, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you all. Take care, Congressman. All right. Congressman Betty Carter here on the world-famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM and Jess, a big dog country radio. And, Bob, we always appreciate the congressman calling in. It's always fun to talk to him. Again, I want to remind everybody, one of our sponsors of the Butch and Bob Show, Vans Barbecue, has the Thursday All-You-Can-Eat Seafood Day today. Again, it's bull shrimp, eighteen ninety-five, fried shrimp, twenty-three ninety-five, and crab legs, thirty-nine ninety-five. Again, all-you-can-eat today at Vans Barbecue. So, Go check it out. Again, they got the new dining room down there as well, so you can sit in there and enjoy all that shrimp and crab legs today down at Vans Barbecue and watch some basketball. they got TVs in that dining room, so you can sit in there and watch some ball games as well. Sit there and eat away and watch some basketball. Right there at Vans Barbecue on the Savannah Highway here in Jessup, right at the base of the Highway 301 bypass. I got to call yesterday from Coach McDonald again with the rain coming in tomorrow. Uh, they pushed the uh, time for the doubleheader up to 3.30 will be the first game. Tomorrow. So they moved it up an hour from, right. from you know, So I guess the, the umps can be here by right. the umpires can be here by 3.30. Okay. Yep. So 3.30 game time, game one. So doubleheader tomorrow. Howard yeah. Bow Warren Field taking on Burke County, 3.30. Get out there and support them jackets. Wear that gold and white and black and yellow and cheer them on the victory. Yeah. What kind of crowd did Burke County have when you were out there Tuesday? Uh, Wayne County had as many people as they did. did. They? Yeah, yeah, they had they had to get a nice. They got that reserve seating behind. It was pretty well filled up, but they had a decent crowd, but uh, nothing. Nothing like the nothing bow. like the bow. You know, nothing like our support. And I said, and Coach McDonald encourages, and he talks about all the time how that big crowd has an effect. So hopefully, a big crowd. I mean, the crowds have been tremendous thus far this season. Uh, student bodies really showing up, 
in the bleachers. So again, hopefully a big crowd tomorrow for the doubleheader. Like I said, kids don't have school tomorrow. It's a teacher work day tomorrow, but kids are out. So hopefully all the kids will be on hand and support the Yellow Jackets in that doubleheader against Burke. Okay. Sounds good. First week of region play. We began this week against Burke. Doubleheader tomorrow. And then to next week, they'll play three games against another region team and right on down the line. I think we're going to be fine in this region. I said shocker yesterday. Islands beat BC 12 to 2. I was just, when you said that score, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Jeez. And the Islands only won five games before that. So they're not very good. So I think this region's for the taking. Wayne County wants that number one seed going to the state playoffs. So it's the number four team. Get two rounds at home and, and go from there. So that's the plan. That's the goal. I think they'll achieve it. So it should be another good year in sports. Like I said the golf team's rolling. Saw some of those golfers yesterday. They they got their eye on the prize. All they're talking about is winning that state title yep. this year. So they're playing extremely well. A lot of talented golfers in that program. Okay. A lot of good things going on in Wayne County Athletics. Yep. Sad to see Jalen Carter couldn't finish the drills yesterday. What is it with him? You've he's got just, this coming up. You know you're supposed to be in shape. He's costing himself millions of dollars. I and mean, they, all those NFL coaches there just. You know, what, you, what you're sitting there because you know if he's going to do that when he's you know getting ready to, to sign a contract. I mean, you, you do that. What's he going to be like once you become, get on the team? He's over there huffing, you know? and huffing and puffing. <laughs> they had to get him an oxygen tank. My word! What I, I don't understand that you've got some of you got some of the best workout facilities in the nation right there in Athens. I'm not oh. sure if he's still in Athens, but if he is, then my you know get out there with the you got the you got the strength and conditioning coaches right there. You keep it going. You don't slack off. And Aaron Rodgers and I just uh, he does want to play for the New York Jets. So the Packers and the Jets are trying to work it out where he's going to be in New York next year. So let's make a deal. Wrestling. So the Jets got their franchise quarterbacks that they've been, I've been hoping for, hoping for ever. So mm-hmm. we'll see how it'll be interesting how it all plays out with him in New York. But a lot going on. The Cowboys cut Ezekiel Elliott. That was kind of surprising yesterday. I know. I so, thought that Jerry, you know, Jerry's pretty loyal to those guys, but you know, when you got another running back there that's better, and you're paying him all that money, you're out of here. The other back's the one he needs to worry about is quarterback. That's the, that's the one. He, that's the one. That's the one he should have cut. Uh, well, I can see his equal going first, but um, I should ask. He Raymond. just didn't. I should ask. I should ask Raymond that yesterday. I saw Raymond Ryan, die hard Cowboy fan. What he thought about that? But I don't think he's a big is uh, Dak Prescott fan either. So, but the Cowboys making some moves. So. A lot of teams doing a lot. Falcons really spend a lot of money I mean, in the free agency. They're Falcons just, make a lot of moves. Lot of moves they're, so. wanting, they're wanting to win uh, this year big time. It's going to be an interesting season. So. Draft coming up in April. That will be fun to watch. So. But the Georgia Pro Day, like that Nolan Smith, that linebacker, is really be interesting to see where he goes because he's really, from the combine and the Pro Day, he's really impressed people with his athletic ability. The linebacker, Nolan Smith from Georgia. So. Okay, Nolan Smith. Yeah. Uh, be interesting where his draft. At least he's staying in shape. It's, huh? it's just going to be interesting where Jalen Carter does one. You know, I mean, he, before all this, he I mean he was projected as maybe the top pick in the overall draft. I and know. The, since the car wreck and the you know, not showing up out of shape, um, it's going to be interesting how far he drops. Right. So all eyes on Jalen Carter NFL draft. You know, where does he? How far does he go down that board? You know, he, is he still a first round had, draft pick? Who yeah, knows? a lot of these guys have had coaches and all that come around and push them, helping them, motivate them. And sometimes when they're on their own, they slack off a little bit and yeah. they don't realize how quickly a body can get out of shape if you don't keep working yeah. at it every day. I was just glad Mike Tomlin, the Steelers, was at Pro Day in Athens. So he got to see Stetson Bennett live in person. So there's your backup quarterback. <laughs> so it's Stetson. Get rid of Mason Rudolph. Bring Stetson in for the backup there yep. at Pittsburgh. Right, right. right. Okay. Be good. Okay. We need a reliable backup in case Kenny Pickett gets hurt. So, they still got George Pickens up there. So, he had a great year last year's rookie year in Pittsburgh. So, good receiver. So, hopefully they pick up some more Georgia players. They've always had success with Georgia. You know, Heinz Ward was you know, a Super Bowl mm, champion. Right. So, it's always good when the Steelers pick up Georgia Bulldog fans. So, it makes it double entertaining for you. Yeah, right. It's good to see the dogs playing 
in black and gold. So it's good stuff. It's have a nice tradition. Okay. So, but Stetson, he'd look good in black and gold. Just glad Tomlin was on hand in person to see him. So he had a good pro day. So. All the NFL, so that's what's so sad for Jalen Carter, all those, I mean, not assistant coaches, not scouts. The NFL coaches themselves were there to watch it in person. The big dogs yeah. themselves. Right. <laughs> it wasn't assistant. It's, it's not the time to go out and lay an egg. No. <laughs> it's not the time to go out there out of shape and not be able to finish the drill. Like, Where's that oxygen? Uh, it wasn't a good day for Jalen Carter. It's sad to hear. So. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Wow. Anything going on here locally, uh, news-wise, that we need to know about? Uh, Keep an eye on. School no? board. School board got to see the drawing of the uh, ag center at this at the meeting, so it's going to be a nice. I said they're hoping that East Boss passes. Uh, hopefully, that's, I mean that's the big story. The big story. They got less than five hundred people voted thus far. I know. I mean, less than five hundred. You got uh, looks like it's going to be less than five employees for the school for system, the school system right. plus their families, families aunts, yeah. uncles, grandparents, yeah, right? Yeah. Kind of stuff like I that. Mean, that they're the ones supposed to be pushing it. So it doesn't look like they got much interest in the school system. Yeah, I mean, you go got, and vote you know, for it. Yeah, the ROTC building, which eventually is going to have to be built, or the Army will pull their ROTC from here. Then uh, you got the AG. We're a big ag area, so you know good and well that most of the public wants, uh, you know, the ag program to be very successful there at Wayne County. And you've got, uh, you know, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands, you know, over a period of time, thousands of kids that ride the buses and you want new buses with air conditioning and stuff like that. You got the possibility of improving our athletic facilities and uh, technology in the schools and stuff like that with that. So there's so much can be done to it. I had a person uh, text the other day, well, I'm not going to vote for a tax increase. This is not a tax increase. No, this a is a continuation increase. of the sales tax that we've had now for the last 15 to 20 years. And, uh, you know, the East Boss has been around for a long time. You've got all these new schools that have been built with it and remodeled and so forth over the past 15 years. And this is just a c- continuation. So it's not an increase. And when you go out of town to any other county around us and buy something, whether it's the Glen, Chatham, you know, Liberty, uh, where, wherever the case may be, when you go buy stuff there, you're paying their East Bloss tax. So if you, you know, so here, we got the opportunity of not only Wayne Countyans, but all the people that come into Wayne Countyans, uh, into Wayne County, helping us um, improve our school system here. So it's just a continuation of the East Bloss. It doesn't change taxes in any type of way, up or down. And it raises, it keeps it the same. raises a lot of money. Like raises a lot of money. Raise thirty a penny million at over a time. five years. So yeah, that, a penny that, at pen, a time. that penny adds up quickly. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's, I mean, like I said, I'm just surprised it's been that lower turnout with you know, like I said, the educational with people you think would be out there pushing it. And like I said you got 800 employees in the school system with their aunts, uncles, relatives, but less yeah, than immediate the, family. Looks all like that less, kind of looks stuff. like less than 500 people going to vote. In three weeks of early voting with two Saturdays. So, that is just absolutely it. amazing. And I don't see This it. is very important. I don't see a big crowd showing up Tuesday. Yeah, I, mean, I just you, don't see it. Even if you, you know, say 50% more show up, you're still got, you know, you're going to be less than 2,000 people so, who decide out of 17,000 registered voters. That's just, you know, something that's so important. Uh, let's hope it passes. But right now, to me, it's a crapshoot. So, yeah. But I say you know, the educators can't get out there and, Get it passed. Well, they have yeah. been very successful in the past three or four this past year. It's for five years. I know we've had at least three. So we've had it for at least about 15 years. And uh, so they've been pretty successful in, 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 in uh, getting the, the, uh, the, the East Boss passed. And so you think that say, right, we're just going to roll. We're just going to keep it going. You know, we've been having it for the last 15 years. Let's keep that penny sales tax going. But to me, that's the big story how few people voted for this East Bloss because it is very important. But I said, you got 800 school employees, and they hadn't shown up yet. No, they had not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, listen, I mean, it's going to be less than – I promise you, there's not going to be – by the end of Friday, there's not going to be more than 500 people voted on this East Bloss in three weeks with two Saturday voting. That's, that's it's amazing. It's just a sad story. Okay, and then election day next Tuesday, and then the count will be next Tuesday night, and we'll pass it along to everybody right. well, to see if we get all these improvements or not. Yeah, yeah. I said you're going to get it one way or the other. <laughs> that's what. That's yeah, what. See, that's what people need to understand. Tax or property right. taxes. Right. So let's go with the sales tax. We've been right. doing it for all these years. Let's continue to go. You know, let's let's, let's just, just, just continue it let's on. Hope it I mean, passes. Yep. 
Because right. like all these all these Cal- the counties around us have the East Blast, and we every time that you go over there and shop at these places, it helps theirs. And uh, you know you've got what I think uh, they say at least uh, you know, thirty to forty percent of the sales tax paid here in Wayne County is done by out of towners in some sort of way. Right. So let them help our improvements. We need that. If you take a look at the plans of the agricultural center, it is just going to be great for the high school and great for the, the teach these uh, students uh, and get involvement in agriculture. And the ROTC, we made a commitment to the army that when we started the ROTC program, they'd have their own space, which we haven't done that yet. And then you've got the, uh, the, uh, the buses, the technology, and then uh, improvement to, um, to some of the, um, uh, uh, the athletic fields. Well, go vote and then go eat some shrimp at Fans Barbecue or some crab legs. Go yes, down sir. there today, boiled shrimp, eighteen ninety five. All you can eat, fried shrimp, twenty three ninety five. All you can eat, and crab legs, thirty nine ninety five. That's taking place all day today at Fans Barbecue. So, go vote and then go eat at Fans Barbecue. Check it out. All right, Bob. Watch some NCAA basketball. <laughs> You have a good day, Bob. Take care. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO, 105.5 FM in Jessup, has been brought to you by O'Quinn & Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bank.